Welcome to another episode of the Starter Girls Podcast with your host, Jennifer Loading and Brianna Drellis. And together we are the Starter Girls, where extraordinary decisions produce extraordinary results. These are our friends, these are your friends, and they are living the extraordinary. This episode is brought to you by Walt Mills Photographer of Glad Models Agency. If you are here in the Dallas or surrounding area and looking for some photography work, check out Walt Mills. You can learn more about him and his work at Photos by Walt.com. And additionally, we want to give a shout out to our friends at Studio Dallas. Studio Dallas is the best kept secret in the Dallas podcasting world. If you are looking for a studio with top-notch technology, video, and audio recording capabilities, as well as a production team to help make things go smoothly, <laughs> then Studio Dallas is the place to be. You can learn more about them by reaching out to, to us at startergirls at gmail.com. And we want to connect with you and also got, uh, give you a free gift. So if you held, if you head over to startergirlswithaz.com, you'll be able to pick up a free gift that we have for you so that we can keep in touch. Oh, goodness. This is I fun. Now, now it's my turn. Boom, boom, boom. It's all going to be good. <laughs> all right. Today's a great day to be brave. You might as well start now. You have the power to change your circumstances any day you decide. Let today be that day. Rise up. Be amazing. Be you. Do you. All right, we are super excited about our guest. I think we just needed to like skip our intro today and get to the guest because we're just super excited. But you know, we got to say all those important things, right? Right. All right, so our guest today, Kate McKay, is a speaker, coach, media expert, fitness and wellness buff and a mom. Despite the tragic loss of her son, Will, in 2017, Kate is proof that we are capable of overcoming life's most significant challenges. Kate is committed to inspiring others to live a breakthrough life. And she refers to herself as the breakthrough catalyst. I love this. She's been interviewed on TV, radio, and podcasts across the country, written for Entrepreneur Magazine, appeared on PBS, and is a monthly columnist. Kate provides prides herself on having a multi-million dollar company with a theater degree. This is so great. As she often states, <laughs> life is a stage. What role have you assigned for yourself? There is no dress rehearsal. Isn't it time you cast yourself in the starring role of your life? Welcome to the Starter Girls podcast, Woo! Kate. That just Let's gives go. me chills. I love Let's that. go. I don't think Let's I've ever. Let's go. That's right, baby. Is it not awesome? <laughs> it is. Like Cast I, yourself in the starring role, baby. I was looking at it too. Another one. We look, you know, when I get these bios and I'm looking at them and I'm like, oh my gosh, like I just want to read everything because they're so incredible. But it's like, we have such short time. I've got to get the bam in there. Exact. So this Let's right go. here sums, I think just kind of sums you up. I love it, love it, love it. So do you want to get this started today or you want me to start? You, you okay. kick it off. Okay. We're so happy you're here, Kate McKay. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Big love. <laughs> She's cute. So, Kate, what I want you to do, because you've got so many incredible things going on here, tell us a little bit about who is it that you are helping? Tell us a little about what it is you do and who is it that you help? Well, I love that question because it's so awesome because that's pretty much every day I get up and I'm like, all right, who am I going to change today? Because, like, I'm an achiever. I'm here to, to be a game changer. And if I, um, I judge my success by when I lay my head on my pillow and know that I made a difference and that's just, that's it, you know, and that I pushed and lived in my edge. And I think that's why I'm, a, uh, you know, why I'm a exercise person, um, because I'm always living on the edge and, um, it's just the brilliance happens there. And I think, uh, that's pretty much what I would love for people to know is that that comfort zone, there's nothing growing there. There's nothing. And so my job is to make people uncomfortable and love on them so they can live within their greatness. And I am fearless in my commitment to that, for sure. I love that. And, you know, are you training? Remind me, are you training for something right now? I think you told me you're pushing yourself right now. <laughs> which is getting you at, kind of yes, I am. Right? So I'm so 57 and... So yeah, so I'm 57 and uh, I started competing as a bikini competitor when I was age 43 after having three kids. And so I'm from a family of nine children. Um, it was um, definitely no competition when you have that big a family. It was how you get along because, you know, if there's too much fighting, it's just utter chaos. So really, I wasn't bred to be an athlete. Uh, even though I think that I really would have been a great athlete as a young age, but nine kids, you have no money. And so um, that's why it was like 43. This is cool because this is about A-game people getting together and being their best and supporting each other. 
And that's what I've learned. I learned through that as a bikini competitor. And again, from age 43 to up till 55, I competed. Um, just a blast and just an um, insane amount of effort and work. And those of you who don't know what bikini competition or figure competitions are, it's a combination of bodybuilding and pageantry. So, um, and the funny thing is behind the curtains, I mean, you guys are from Texas, so you know it, you know, it's like, it's pageantry and we're all like in the back badasses, you know, like these are like serious athletes and we come on stage and we're like, let's play the role, <laughs> you know? So it was just, it was a lot of fun and it really taught me discipline because listen, I'm a classic ADHDer, you know, in class, in school, it was John, George, Katie, sit down, stop talking. I mean, this was my life. And I didn't realize that that superpower of mine to live big, to be bold, was something to be proud of. Um, I had a lot of shame and guilt and self-loathing about it because I didn't fit in. I never fit in. And um, and really what it took was, you know, I, I got shipped off to private high school when I was uh, a junior in high school because I liked boys too much. They were my drug of choice. <laughs> so I was sent off to an all girls um, performing arts school and I found theater. And this is the gift of it. And this is the gift of every single business success. Doesn't matter. Like I built a multi-million dollar company. I'm a high-end coach. I, 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 you know, it doesn't matter. Parenting, the gift is in the listening. And so I'm taking a theater class and I'm like, all right. So like I'm getting A's and all I have to do is like, like authentically listen to what's in front of me. And um, that just blew me away. And to think that that's actually a really unique quality because what else is there is to listen and help people transform their lives through your presence, through mirroring their brilliance and challenging and pushing against the edges because they tell you this is the deal. When someone tells me they want something, I'm never gonna forget it. You can ask Brianna. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to be like, so, hey, how is that going? And, you know, pretty much I freak people out by what I remember. But it's a gift of remembrance of people's gifts and dreams. And that's what I do every single day. And I feel blessed and honored to be able to do it. Oh, I love oh you goodness. so much. Okay, Kate. Kate, I haven't told you before, but I like I'm like, if she like. <laughs> I know. I this was is, so this is my girl. This is my home girl. Yeah, I'm sitting back here like taking in your energy because she was like like the whole like getting in trouble in school, all of that stuff. Like I'm one of those kids that was like that too. Totally. And, I get it. and then not fitting in and always feeling like you're like, you have mm -hmm. okay, so here's the thing. I talk about this all the time because for many years, and I don't know about you, but I for many years got in trouble for talking in school and I'm and I it felt bad about it for many, many years, okay? And you said some things in this conversation about finding like those superpowers, finding those unique gifts. And when you learn to figure out those are the things that make you special, they make you who you are. And then you can turn that into something, bam, like bam. And you know the thing that's important about that, that I really work, cause I work with a lot of young people. I mean, you mentioned that I lost my son and I'd love to actually talk about that a little mm -hmm. bit more, but cause it's so freaking transformational. Like grief takes you to places that, mm, Mm, right it's some pretty intense stuff but the power in it is that there is a power in, it's not like post-traumatic stress like i had a lot of trauma i mean my brother was murdered when i was a little girl when i you know he was and he was 22. my son he was 22. so what is that what am i here to heal and i love it that you talk about the strength because it's not just like who you are in the in this moment where you're a badass right? Because right. the claim you're in a badass is the book I wrote. It's the Amazon bestseller. But but it is, how are you using the power of who you are, owning it and healing what came before so that you can be ultimately the highest and best? Because you can get nowhere if you don't do your healing work. And I'm, I'm a trooper in that space. I'm not afraid to go in the dark. And listen, this is what I tell my young kids, because I work with a lot of young people. These kids are more awake than we could ever dream of. And they're having a trouble in a problems is an integration of their awareness. This is the challenge. Anxiety and depression is because they don't know how to process their awakening. Right. They're awake children. So much of my work with the young people to say, baby, you can tell me anything you want because there is not one dark thing that you could share with me that I'm afraid of. And I can hold that for you. And I'm like, do you trust me? And they're like, yes right because who's ever said that to us right whoever said to us you can tell me anything and i won't judge you and i'm gonna love you in that broken place no one told me that and if i can heal one baby at a time that's redemption for me because of the loss of my own angel right mm -hmm. so it's like 
It's the easiest work I've ever done. Bring me your darkness. I can hold it and we will transmute it because there is no reason to feel shame and guilt about some crazy shit that you're integrating because I, I can feel it, you know? So that's really super important part of me. I mean, I work with men. I work a lot with men. I work with athlete, athletes. I work with CEOs. I mean, just like my diversity client, this is the way it is when you're from a family of 11. <laughs> you want diversity because you're used to being freaking ADHD cray. So um, so you're used to working that. But, you know, the core really of, uh, of yeah, no, legit. But I, I'll tell you the thing that I've owned now really in a much bigger way. And that is I've always wanted to be a sprinter. Okay, I'm 57. It's like people are like you high, and I'm like, mm. so I don't really talk about the crazy things, but I do. But that's what I'm training for right now is I want to be a sprinter. I don't care if I'm too old or this and that. So it's had to push me to an edge, and for me to say it out loud is kind of a big deal. <laughs> but it's you know it required me number one to high, hire the right people around you. Your friends, your family do not want you to be different. They don't want you to live in your greatness because it scares the crap out of them. They don't want you to change. So you have to hire people. You have to hire people to a game your life. It's the biggest place of where I've spent my money because this is the reason why this broken ADHD freak, right? Who I thought I was is able to function at the high level that I am because I surrounded myself with a game players. And guess what? I had to say goodbye to a fair number of people. And I've learned, this is the beautiful thing. I want you guys all to know that to let go of somebody doesn't have to be with anger and rage and this and that. It can be like, I love you and this isn't working for me. So good. I love and you. I love you just, and, yeah. right? I love you and I want the best for you. Right. I love you and I'm releasing us so that we no longer have to be in this push and pull that's not working for us because it's taking away from the divine vertical relationship that we came here to live. And, um, so and if someone ever taught me that you can end relationships with grace, I would have saved a whole lot of heartache. And that's what happens when you go through profound grief, right? My son, Will, was, uh, he was a, an angel. And I think he got dropped in this world and it's like, what's everyone suffering about, right? He didn't understand how come people just didn't love each other. And he was kick-ass. Let me tell you, his kid was gritty. He could play Chopin, you'd weep. He could move in gymnastics and you just cried how elegant and strong he was. The way he loved people. I remember this is a funny story, but I was in an airport. We were actually going to the monastery because he went to a Buddhist monastery. He lived there for a while. He was going to become a monk. And we're in the back of a plane and he's like 20, 21. And I'm like, oh, I felt kind of bad for him because we were separated. And then he was sat next to this kind of like, like dumpy middle-aged lady or whatever else, you know, like, you know, I'm like, oh, most kids, teenagers would be like, oh God, mom, had earbuds, right? But I, every time I walk back there, he's like, she's talking and she's glowing. And he's like, mm, mm, like so interested in her. He didn't care. He was like, oh my God, a human that I can love. And she was so lit up. And that's the way he walked through the world. And um, one of my coaches after Will died said to me, you know, when someone dies and leaves the planet, those qualities and gifts, those beautiful qualities and gifts that you loved and you ache for, those are yours. We can claim them. And I was like, oh, holy crap. He had so many qualities. So he was my spiritual teacher, right? So if I know that, I'm like, I can be in the love that he was. I can be the kindness that he was. And um, and literally, I walk in his shoes every friggin' day. And that's why I, have, I live fearlessly. I think people think I'm a super spreader, but I consider myself a super spreader of love. That's what I'm doing. During COVID, we need super spreaders. I agree. We do. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think it was great that you shared on here about your sprinting because I think you should do that <laughs> and stick with that. You know, somebody asked me the other day, I put something up on Facebook that I was, you know, I, I don't, I've talked about this, like, I don't know that I want to run as much as I did because at the time that I was running a lot, I was actually going through a very devastating disease. And so mm -hmm. I don't want to say that I understand where you are, but I understand despair and tragedy and depression and all of that and being mm -hmm. rock bottom at the, at the end of something and having to survive through that. And so mm -hmm. we talked earlier about, you know, your vices or whatever, running was my vice. That's what I used to help me get through that. So I made a comment the other day and somebody asked me, they go, you know, well, why are you running now? And I said, because I like to defy the odds. I don't want to somebody look at me and say, because I'm a certain age, because I'm a mother of adult children that, hello, I can't do something. I want to be like, hey, if I want to do it, 
and I and it sounds like fun. I'm gonna go do it. And I don't want to skydive. I'm not gonna lie about that. I don't want to do that. That that's overrated, Jen. Exactly. It's overrated. I, I did it. it. I did on my fiftieth birthday. <laughs> No, I did it on my 50th birthday and I was talking to my girlfriend. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to skydive. She goes, we have you, have you told anyone else? I'm like, no, I'm talking to you. You know, it's just like, and I got so sick. I tried to eat, like I had such an upset stomach. And then I thought it was a good idea to eat a pint of Haagen-Dazs, you know? And yeah, that was just bad on bad. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, but the thing is, is like, where are you living on your edges? Right. And I think that's why I'm so like weight training is something that's so important to me because listen, to be strong as a woman or a man, because let's get, let's, we, men need so much support right now, you guys, but you know, to be strong has made me um, embrace such a feminine part of myself, which I think is so interesting. I used to think that I was such a masculine energy because I was loud and, and I'm, but I'm a little person, but I always felt like I was big, you know, I was, I'm like, I am medium large, but what weight training has done for me. Um, and, and I really stress it a lot with the weight training because sarcopenia, the loss of muscle mass is real. And our joints, our bones, our ligaments cannot do the work that our muscles are supposed to do. So this is my, you know, I'm, I'm preaching it all the time. You got to do weight training work. People, we've got to. If you want to still look good naked, you got to lift some weights. Okay? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's important. So um, I, that's my little, my banter. But really, that's what it's about is pushing the edge and, uh, and sprinting at 57. I don't know. I don't even know who I'm going to compete against, but. Hopefully there's going to be some other crazy people out there, you know, but, but the regimen to do a sprinting is a lot of strength training. So today I was in the gym. And so there's certain exercises that I have to do in sequences. I'm scared to death. I'm like, my heart is palpitating and I'm like, I can't do this. But then I'm like, let's go, you know? So I have to pump. If you could, if people could hear how I talk to myself, they'd be like, she's out of her mind. You know, I'm like, just out of her mind. With your mask on. I saw a video of you today with your, your mask on and you're like totally pumping all this, you know, iron. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh. I would love to wear work a out mask. with her at the gym. I, I am so I feeling it's, her right now. I'd be I mean, like, like, Jennifer, go, we would have, have, you have no store. idea. We would have so much fun because this is the ultimate, this is what I want everyone to know, right? Despite the tragedy that I've been through and you guys, this is like divorce. My former husband went psychotic after my son died. I have a son who's struggling with drugs. Like I came, my family of origin is full of addicts and alcoholics. I have been through the freaking ringer and yet I shine. And the reason why is because I know I would, there was something imprinted in me that I know I was here to shine the light on others. And I'm gonna start crying because like, if I ugh, if I don't live that, it's a dishonor to my son, it's a dishonor to my brother, it's a dishonor of every single person that has witnessed me publicly grieve the loss that I, the way that I had to grieve it. Cause I wasn't gonna hide. Cause I want people to know there isn't just post-traumatic stress syndrome. There's post-traumatic transformation Honestly and truly, if I am going to be a living example of that, and I'm not an extrovert, I may come across like I am, but I'm shy. No lie. You could ask anybody. You could put me into a bar. I'd be like sitting in the bar like this, having a drink. So anyway, like I'm legit a shy human, but God imprinted me with some big light and I am not going to shy away from that. Right? You're so awesome. Fun. I love I'm, you so much. Truly. I'll make you feel better because I tell people I'm shy all the time too, and they never believe it. <laughs> <laughs> you are, I, I, listen, Kate, I used to be, I did I used to be really shy. I did use, like, I couldn't even walk in. This is true story. I could not even walk into a room if I knew that I was going to be late or have to leave early because I didn't want eyes on me. Like I didn't want people to notice me. I still I get that. Doing that. I still get that weird. Like, you know, it doesn't bother me as much. I get it in my stomach, you know, but I get I, it. I think all this growth that you've had has helped you come out on that other side. And I think, yes, I think, you know, all the stuff that you've been dealt. And I think, you know, something I tell people all the time, you know, is that when you go through something that's pretty traumatic in your life, I think because I, I know my stuff and I've seen other people, when you can come out on the other side of that, and, and it's almost like you have a new lease on life. That's what I feel like. You see things very, very differently. And it's almost like you feel like you've said over and over and in this, you feel obligated that you need yes. to share those messages with people. So when I have these coaching calls, it's so funny, Kate, because you know, those people that get it and the people that just don't get it, like they don't. Oh, yes. Talks. And I feel like I'm having that talk and I'm like talking to the wall and I get the glazed look and there I'm like, 
I don't know how to explain this to you because you know when you're on the other side and you can look at yes. life very differently and you can learn to embrace yes. every day as a journey. And, and there's a win in every single day, despite all the muck that we go through. You know what I mean? And that's when I- 100%. You really and sometimes, you know, Jennifer, it's sort of true, like, because you understand this, is that sometimes we just have to live it as if. And, yeah. and you share what you want and I'm going to hold that for you. I'm a keeper of dreams. I can tell exactly what my little lover here in red next to you is her dreams are. Who's holding that more than me, than her, than anybody? Well, me, because every single day I'm like, yep. And this is what she's going to do. And this is what her life's going to be like. And then the gold rains on her. Right. No, so no. it's like, if someone tells me what they want and they show it to my soul, I never forget it <laughs> because Good. that's the gift, right? Yeah, that's the I'm gift for that. Thank and you know, I want to say one other thing. You made some really, you guys just are awesome. I'm just so appreciating this because, like, I'm I'm blabbing, but I totally appreciate this. But what you were saying about people um, not knowing what it's going to be like, or or not believing, or having faith, and you know, it is the mustard seed, but it's also just it's it's be having the courage to let go of the self-sabotage and the self-loathing and the self-doubt. And there are tools, tips, and strategies to do it. I'm an action-based coach. I'm going to give you tools and you got to deal with your tolerations. You got to create a daily habit. You got to create a daily practice and tell me your story so that I can help you heal it. And that's a big part of, of the work as a coach for me. Anyway, I'm a restorative coach for sure. She just speak it totally speak in my language. Boom. <laughs> you know, what's so funny is the action based thing, because I know like when I was trying, this was the hardest part because I had came from an industry that I'd been in for 21 years. And that was all I had done. It started when I was 27. I'd been in that industry. And when I tried to morph in, I'd been coaching and mentoring all those years, but it was in a different capacity because I was coaching business women. And I wanted mm. to transition into being able to help women and men in a different way because what I found is that there were these basic elements, or I don't say elements, these techniques that I had to do in my life every day because what I recognized is that for me personally, I was chasing crises and goals all the time. Like I was going from one to the other and I was never embracing the journey. And so I was continually unhappy. So let's talk about exercising. I'd run a marathon and I'd be like, do all this extensive training, get to the end of the marathon. And then I'm like, okay, that's over. Um, now I'm what? depressed. Well, now what? What do yeah. I do? Yeah, what's and next? What happens? A cycle, another thing, or I'd go into this massive crisis. Like I'm talking, something's happening with a family member, something's going down, right? And it turns into this mess. And so when I went through this whole thing, when I came out on the other side, I was like, there's this pattern going on. Like there's this, something is going on here and I've got to get to the bottom and figure out like, what mm. is this? So talking about those limiting beliefs, I went through and I, when I wrote my book, I went through and I started figuring out what are these techniques that I'm doing that are pulling me out of this. So I have these seven habits that I talk about, very action based that I do pretty much every day or on a weekly basis that I, that I instill in my life because I'm very disciplined about things. And so I tell people that when you learn those basic things, they are the things that will change the trajectory or trajectory of your entire life. Productivity in your business, 100%. your relationships, your health. They everything. Everything. But well, you got to master I think those. that, yeah, absolutely. And I think that as creatives or as people who are innovators, for them to learn these words, systems are sexy. Ooh. Systems are sexy. Good. Legit, right? Because if you understand that your brilliance is birthed in structure, it is like the gateway of like, Oh, right. It's just like everything open up for you and resist, resist, resist structure is what we do because we feel hemmed in or not realize that the ticket to your brilliance is in forming a love little basket around your brilliance. And that requires, yeah, you better have a prayer meditation habit. You better be moving your body every day. You better be hydrating. You better be spending your day in creativity and production. She is talking creativity about in your production. <laughs> Most people are one or the you other. You guys would get along. <laughs> I'm like, okay, you and I could be talking for a really long time. I have a feeling like, oh my goodness. All right, <laughs> I'm go I gotta ask. Okay, and we can't, this needs to be the Cliff Notes version, but tell us a little bit about your vagabond life. What is yeah, so, that? Yeah, uh, so this is kind of nuts. 
especially because it's like COVID and everyone's like has such a judgment about it. But like the bottom line is I woke up last uh, Easter and I was like, I'm selling everything and I'm moving. I'm going to Hawaii. And I talked to my coach. He's like, what? Why Hawaii? I'm like, I don't know. I got something to learn there. So I sold my condo and I basically sold all my stuff and I got a bigger car and I left Massachusetts. Um, the first stop was to put my son's ashes back in the water where he chose to ascend as his friends um, describe it. And that was really spiritual, intense experience of releasing, rebirthing my son into the elements. And that was just, that was the beginning. And, um, and then I just traveled. I had an atlas. I had highlighted places that I wanted to visit. And I was just feeling the places where I went. I worked out. I basically framed my trip out with the Planet Fitness uh, and friends. And so I, I was in Park City and now I am in Southern Utah and then eventually will be meandering my way to Hawaii. That's the goal, but I don't feel attachment. And this is also just one final really important point that when you go through a tragedy and everyone is, has them, everyone has those traumas, right? Cause we, the traumas begin when we're young children. And a lot of my work is to heal that young trauma. You know, what happens there? But when you go through trauma and you heal, you're so used to being attached to anxiety and self-judgment that it feels weird to not have attachment. It just, it's, it's unnerving almost. And part of the healing process is most people want to go back into that state that they're used to. And what does that mean if you actually sit in the freedom of number one, maybe not knowing, of number two, wow, I feel peace. Wow. Number three, I'm not attached and addicted to crappy relationships, right? Me. Call me out. Call me out. Right. Um, so understanding that that is a part of the transformation is a new sense of freedom. And I originally thought, gosh, is this what depression is when you don't feel attached? But literally it's healthy. <laughs> and for me, that was such a knock off the head. As they say, the cosmic two by four. Um, I just think that that's important for people to know that the freedom is real and the freedom is weird. And then the freedom is wonderful. So I just want to say God bless all of you. And um, if you need anything, uh, kate-mckay.com, written a few books, Living Sexy Fit and Any Age, Claim Your Inner Badass, um, which is an Amazon bestseller. And also I just re um, released a gratitude journal, which is you know, Jennifer and Brianna, you guys know, gratitude's everything. So Absolutely. thank you so much for having me on. I appreciate it very, very much. This was so good. You're so, we love you so much. And we have some fun questions for you too, before, yeah. before we let you go. Yeah, I'm stuck in Absolutely. She said, I'm like, man, I want to carry more conversation after, after this, everything you're doing, everything that is so what I talk about, I just love it. I'd say very few people that I feel like that I find get get it all. It's a lot, and people have to take it in, and they got they have to want to take you in. You know what I mean? Like they have to want that because. But yes, you said so many things about the the I, I, thing that was coming to mind is the peace. Just moving away from those limiting beliefs that are tying you down because that's what you're used to doing, and coming on the 100%. other side and being. I have to let that go. But when I do, it's scary, but there's peace on the other side of that. Freedom. And even the good feelings are scary, right, Jennifer? Like yeah. peace is scary. 100%. <laughs> right? Oh. Peace is scary. Freedom okay. is scary, right? It's like, but then I'm like, wow, I'm settling into it. So yeah, awesome. it's, Sometimes it's worth it's it. It's scary because you're afraid it's not going to last. You're like, oh, this feels so good. I don't want it to go away. And yes. then you're scared mm. that it's going to go away. Okay, mm. you're incredible. I love your story. You've got so many great things. Now I know why Brianna said mm. we needed to connect. <laughs> oh, my God. I agree. <laughs> I don't know. I know. Kate's my home we're girl. Like, we're like sisters from another totally. mother or something. I don't totally. know. And I told, Kate that, I told Kate that about you. I did. I go, hey, if, you did. if Kate was in Dallas, <laughs> Jennifer. I may. You know, I may yeah. be. Come, come visit. <laughs> I like never meet people. I, like I, if I meet somebody that has that kind of energy, like you got going on right now, I'm just like, oh, I'm in my space right now. I'm just yeah. totally in the right We're space. home, right? Yes, We're home. Yes, it's so good. Yeah. It's so good. Legit. Okay, so now I got to think, what do we ask her for rapid fire? I'll let you go on, start on this one. <laughs> okay, okay. So, you know what? I'm going to steal a question that my friend Jennifer usually asks. Mm. And I would love to know what you're reading right now, Kate. Good question. Uh, 
Oh yeah, absolutely. So I have a daily practice that I read. Um, I read a bunch of different things, but like my latest book, I mean, I, I tried to read friction fiction and I just, I got like the top 10 books that everyone loves. And I just was like, this is a waste of time. First of all, I don't like reading about violence. I don't read it. like to read about like depression. There's enough, enough of it in the world. So I'm a, um, a, a huge, uh, reader. I'm a freak. So I usually have 10 books going at once, but one of them is Walking with Angels right now by White Eagle. If anyone who's in, just interested in spirituality, White Eagle's amazing. It's very, they're all like books from England, but White Eagle is an incredible channeler of, of God, of, of Christ, of light. So all the same thing. <laughs> We're collecting <Eagle>. books. <laughs> cool. So good. Okay, I know what I want to ask you since you're traveling. I'm going to take your question since Ooh. she's traveling all over. Let's talk about food. What's your favorite food? Because and also because you're healthy. So what's your favorite food? Yeah, so I love just food in general. I'm a chow hound. I'm trying to do like a low carb thing, which is just completely foolish because I'm just <laughs> I don't know. But I eat really, really well. I mean, I wrote my book, book Living Sexy Fit, so nutrition is a big part of it. I love bread, you know, and I love sugar, but I, I live, my, I got this from my dad and father and nine, you know, he, yeah, he had that 65 years part of the why thing. So I'm built just like my old man. So he was new moderation, but he loved his sweets. So I pretty much, I live a really balanced life. I enjoy food. I savor it. It's like sex. It's good shit. So anyone who doesn't like food, I always, I, I have issues. You don't like food. Something's a matter with you. Hey, I like sweets. I like ice cream. I could eat ice cream for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Every so, day. Yeah, so aside from Every the day. pint of haagen you had before skydiving, what is your favorite guilty pleasure? <laughs> after. That's the scary oh, thing. After. I ate it okay. after. It made no sense. Illogical. My favorite what? Guilty pleasure. Yeah, it's it's ice cream, really, honestly. It's like, I even like Charleston Chews, like things like that. Like, I'm like a candy person. <laughs> So I like sugar yeah. too. That's and I don't feel I guilty know. about it. Yeah, I don't either. What's that? I, sugar's mine too, and I don't feel guilty. But I do do low carb because I, I did keto for 22 months to reverse a nerve condition. So I'm all about that whole healthy eating food right. thing. And I know the power of food. Right. But just you know, keep your protein up. Yes, this I is do. the thing people why don't do understand. Keto? The I do reason. Low carb. I do yeah. Hard so the reason why I look like I do at 57 is because I eat a lot of proteins. People are like, how can you look like you do it? I'm like, like what? Like, I don't see myself from my body. I see myself how I feel. And if I don't eat a high protein diet, I don't look good and I don't feel good. So any of you listeners are out there, you've got to, it's like a, a one gram of uh, protein per pound of body weight. Even if you get half fat, I am calling you out and saying brava. Right. But you got, and if you're a sweeter like me, I won't eat the sweets unless I've had three to four ounces of protein before it. It's like, it's just be nice to your internal organs. Your kidney and your liver do not like all those carbs. It gets shot back into your system and it becomes, ins it, it, you become insulin resistant. Right. Yeah, we're so be nice to your body. Love your body. <laughs> Okay, we're going to have a whole other conversation about sugar and carbs if you want to go down there. Let's gonna, go. We're going to have to bring you back and have like a whole other topic. We're going to go on to fitness stuff. We'll be talking about that. Like I can talk about that. Oh my now. gosh, we didn't even touch <laughs> that. <laughs> hey, so, so awesome. uh, what's your, what was your first concert? Mm. Um, I know my first record album was Peter Frampton, uh, you know, cause I'm old, but you know, I don't even like, I think it was, I didn't really, I wanted nine kids. I'm lucky I saw Burger King drive through, you know what I mean? <laughs> so we weren't into show, we just legit. So I, you know, yeah, I probably like the Go-Go's and, and, uh, Sting. That was a pretty good show. I, I like the Go-Go's better. I know that was weird, but I did. Yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah. I know Peter, who Peter Frampton is too. I had my uncle played in a band and used to play Peter Frampton music. So. He's so good. The yeah, best. So awesome. Okay, so one, we're going to, we have to do the character yes, of question. Course. One last fun question for you. If you could be any superhero or a character for one day, step, I, I already think you're your own like amazing character, but we're going to give you another one. If you could be one for a day, what would you pick? Well, Wonder Woman, because she had that cute outfit. Hmm. She has a cute so outfit. Funny, she got to wear cute outfits and I like cute outfits and I want to feel sexy and I want to feel strong. And I think that's what I want to say to women and men that you have, everyone has an inner hottie. Everyone wants to feel attractive and beautiful and desired and own it. 
own it that you're here to live in your greatness. And that's why people are like, well, who would you like to be? I'm like, I don't know. Is there anyone better than who I am as a human? You know what I mean? Like I can only live through me. Um, and that may be, I'm a Leo. So maybe that's just being a Leo. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah, right. good stuff. You need a, you remember, you remember the, what were they, underoos? Remember when, okay, so I'm, I'm a little younger than you. Chris knows. We Remember we had the underoos and because you're just saying like Wonder Woman and you got the fitness competition thing. I'm thinking underoos yes. are coming to mind. Little underoos. Wonder Woman. You could totally pull it off. Totally. Like, totally fun. Totally pull it love off. it. I love it. This has All been right. awesome. Amazing. Awesome. So people can find you at Kate McKay Coach. Is that what it is on Instagram? It's Kate McKay. Um, Kate-McKay.com is the website. Free breakthrough call, you guys. If you want to get on the phone with me, I can solve things in a half an hour. We can be like done like dinner. So I'm here for you. If anything that I've said has moved you, I am a safe haven. I trust and believe I'm a safe haven. I am a keeper of secrets. So um, reach out to me. Yeah, Kate McKay Coach is Insta. Yeah, and uh, Kate, Kate McKay, the Breakthrough Catalyst on Facebook. So you reach also, out to me. You you're not alone, books on people. Amazon. Claim your yeah. badass. You're not alone. Sexy fit. Yeah. Right? Because yeah, thank you. Journal. All of that's on Amazon. Yep. Best-selling books. Yeah, sure is. She's amazing. Kate, you're awesome. <laughs> thank you so much for being on the show. We appreciate you. Keep doing your thing. You're amazing. I love you it. too. Thank you for being here. So good. Peace out. Thanks for listening to all of you out there. All right, Ciao for want... now. Awesome. We do want to say to our listeners, of course, if you enjoy our podcast, please be sure you give us a rating both on iTunes and Facebook and hit that subscribe button on the YouTube channel. And don't forget to head over to startergirlswithaz.com to pick up your free gift so we can keep in touch. And we are hosting our first Starter Girls event of the year, Mindset to Execution on March 25th. All you got to go uh, do is go to found.e, F-O-U-N-D dot E-E backslash m2e found.ee backslash m2e and sign up register we want to see you there absolutely all right we want to leave you guys with a couple final thoughts here focus on the journey not the destination joy is found in not finishing an activity but doing it and that is by greg anderson and in order to have success you must start and that start begins with a decision all right you guys take care be safe and be kind to one another we'll see you next time